Hello folks, welcome to part two of my moon base uh, tutorial video for KSP. Here we are at the uh, habitation module, we've just landed on the moon. I'm actually gonna dis shut down these engines before we get out of here. And uh, then I'm going to send up the science module, which is of course the super exciting part because the science module is what's gonna get us all of that delicious, delicious science. The science which fuels our enduring space quest and makes it better, faster, stronger, etc., etc. Uh, so, let us now discuss the science module. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this uh, science module is also going to fly, you know, a little bit better in this version than it previously did because, as I said in the last part, uh, this thing initially did not. I mean, it got the job done, but only just barely. Uh, apparently, I decided to include a bunch of other crap on the. Okay. Okay, I don't apparently remember every detail of this design. So, anyway, here we are. You'll notice this launch, this sort of bottom stage of the launch vehicle, is pretty much the same as last time. This is a little bit different. Um, we've got a bunch of monopropellant on this one. I'm not sure why, but I guess I felt that was going to be important. Uh, I'm I'm sure I'll find out why once I'm in space. Again, we have a probe core. This is an unmanned mission, initially. The probe core is in a little bit of a different spot. Um, so this, this thing lands on the moon, these thrusters facing down when this lands. And this thruster on the butt here is so that it can propel itself around on the surface because I am not using powered wheels. These landing gear are not, not the powered variety of Wow, those are not really lined up with each other too good. That's weird. Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... fix that. That's weird. Doesn't seem like the kind of error I would have made, but... Okay, that looks a little bit nicer. Um, anyway. Go ahead and save that. So yeah, here's that, uh, the good old mobile processing lab. We've got solar panels on this as well. Not quite so many batteries. Uh, most of the batteries are on the habitation module, and we got these wheels here that we're going to be landing on. The docking port is underneath this nose cone. Uh, so you can't actually see it right now, but that's where the docking port is that we are going to... So basically we land this thing, these wheels down, and we drive it up to the docking port on the other uh, sort of base and it attaches together and then we have a happy time. I carefully positioned these wheels. When I built this thing, I built the habitation module and the science module as like a thing together so that I could make sure that when these are deployed, the docking port height is going, it's going to line up with the um, habitation module height of the docking port there. So when I built this, it was a little bit more of a complicated process, but anyway, that's all fine. So that's pretty much it. The thing that, uh, the thing, okay, yeah, uh, I forgot, I should probably point out, these tanks, these are, let's just pull this out, we got a bit more fuel on this thing. Come here, come here, come, come here. Okay, it doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna pull out. Um, these, here, I'll just drag this out with the, shit, okay. Uh, I can't actually show you guys this apparently, unfortunately. Um, there's, like, three Oscar B fuel tanks attached to each of these, not one. And, uh, I basically stacked the things up on the outside and then just clipped it in there. Some people would say that's kind of cheaty. I can't necessarily argue with that, but, uh, it, I don't know, it looks nice. I, I feel like, I feel like it's okay. I, I line them up with those little windows. I, I think it looks nice. So each of those has, I'm pretty sure they each have three of these Oscar Bs attached to them. Um, just clipped inside the uh, the vehicle there. And that's what we're going to be using to land this thing. So uh, let's go ahead and launch this one up. I'm gonna pause the video for a bit. Uh, yeah, I want to mention the one thing I, the one thing I want to mention before I pause the video to sort of do the boring parts of this flight is uh, this vehicle is a little bit quirky to fly. It pulls down like so, so oh yeah, the other thing is you gotta uh, when you go to launch this, make sure you right here. I'll, I'll show you guys this actually. I'll, I'll do this now. I'll show you. So when you go to launch this thing, if you decide to copy this design, I wouldn't necessarily recommend copying this design. I don't think it's very good, but it, it gives you some idea of the kind of thing 
you can build, I guess. So hopefully that's you know helpful to people. Uh, when you go to launch this thing, make sure you select. I, I try and get the docking port, and make sure you control from the docking port because you'll notice, like controlling from the probe core is not helping. And then when we when we go to land, we're going to switch control location back to the probe core. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time figuring out which way to orient this probe core so that that would work, you know, well. Uh, you'll notice there's a little bit of blue text that says Octo on this probe core, and it's on the opposite of this side. That's important, so that your sort of orientation is the way you want it to be. But yeah, for the most of the flight, we control this thing by this docking port, which I think is also what is holding this nose cone on. I think I, think I use it as a decoupler. Anyway, uh, I'm going to launch this thing. I'm going to fly it to the moon. I'm going to put it into a circular low moon orbit, and then I'm going to resume the recording when I go in for the landing. And we're back! We are now, here we are, over the moon, uh, in a sort of low moonar orbit, and uh, yeah, we're, we're here now. You'll be able to see some of the control challenges, uh, but anyway, before we land, we are not quite, our orbit is not quite right. We are not quite flying over where we landed that first thing. So. I'm just going to set myself up a little maneuver here so that we can adjust. We want to make sure we pass right over that. Uh, that like, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. Like, I think that looks good. We only got to do. We only have to do a really, really small uh, normal burn, and uh, then everything should be nice and happy for us. Yeah, so this thing's a little bit unwieldy. I, I remember why I put the uh, RCS on it now, which is it just makes it a little bit easier to control, you know, sort of flip it around. It's long, and also it's not well balanced. It definitely, you know, sort of tries to pull away from you a bit when you accelerate, and these RCS thrusters just sort of help you uh, keep it pointing the right way, which is, um, generally speaking, an important part of, of a spacecraft operation is having the uh, the craft pointing in the correct direction. Let's uh, just acceler time accelerate over to our maneuver node here. Okay, uh, fuck it, that's close enough. Actually, no, we want to get this, we want to get this thing pretty much perfect. You'll notice I remembered to deploy the solar panels this time, which is good, because this doesn't quite uh, have as much battery power as the habitation module does. Although, I, I probably still could have done this entire mission without deploying the solar panels at any point. It makes me feel better, you know, just to, to have them out there, though. I feel so good. Alright. Yeah, so you'll notice it's not... It's a little bit unwieldy, this one. It doesn't really sit... nicely facing a direction so you just gotta it's still very flyable it's just a little bit tricky you definitely gotta focus a little bit more with this than the other one okay that looks good we're gonna whoops that looks good we're gonna be coming right over that habitat now because of the it's not gonna be perfect we wanna mm, do I wanna it's possible by the time we get over there, it's going to be getting dark very soon. I'm not sure going for a nighttime landing is going to be a good idea. Ah, fuck it. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's set ourselves up for a landing. We do have um those wheels on the bottom of this thing uh, have lights on them, so we will be able to use those to help us see. Uh, it'd be better to land during the day, but I don't want to sit here and wait for the, the moon time of day changes slowly, you know, on the moon. I don't, I don't want to deal with that shit. We're not going to land right on top of it either because it'd be better, it would have been a lot better to just make our orbit more equatorial <laughs> um, and we wouldn't, we would have an easier life, but it's too late for that now. We gotta deal with what we've done. Alright, that looks good. We've got our target locked. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, so, well, let's, uh, let's fly on in there. We're going to be switching, you know, as soon as this thing's out of fuel, we're going to be switching to using this Probodyne Octo as the center, we'll stage, and then we'll be using these three engines to actually land, which I recall being kind of tricky last time, but I'm sure everything will go swimmingly. 
It's gonna go just fine. Alright, yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of light to land in, so that's good. It's advantageous to be able to see where you are landing. Yeah, we're, we're not coming down quite right over it, which is unfortunate. But oh well, what is that? Some kind of, like, arch there. I didn't notice that when I came in with the other vehicle. What is that? Some kind of Munar Easter egg that I'm not aware of. I've never really been to, like, any of the Easter eggs that are on the, the bodies in this game, so I don't... Or is that... Yeah, no, that's weird and some kind of arch there. Anyway, that's that's cool, I guess. I have to go check that out sometime. But not today. We've got a different mission to finish here. Okay, okay. Coming in pretty fast. Yeah, we're going to land much further away from this thing than I really wanted, but that's okay. We, we should be able to drive over there on the surface and get it done. We are going really fast. It occurs to me I should probably probably slow us down a tad here. Wowee, I fucked up. That's okay. I don't use quick saves. Goodbye, everyone. Holy shit, please! <laughs> oh, dear. Looks like a lot of stuff survived. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. We created an excellent cluster bomb. Not quite what I was aiming for. Not quite what I was aiming for. Is any of this stuff gonna, like, stay in orbit? No, this is only gonna... None of it's gonna blast off hard enough to go into orbit, sadly. Ah, uh, well. I made terrible mistakes. Okay, here we are again, uh, I'm now, <laughs> I'm now set up to sort of come down over the, um, that habitation module, and, uh, this time there's not gonna be any mistakes, because if there are, I'm gonna have to go weep and then start fully re-recording this video, because I'm, I'm not gonna have, like, I mean, I'll probably include the fails in the final video, regardless, because people do love to see failure, but, uh, Yeah, wowee. Okay, uh, anyway, this time there will be no mistakes. I swear it! Uh, I have a bit less fuel this time because I didn't take off quite as well and I had to make bigger adjustments after I arrived at the moon, etc, etc. So we don't have quite as much fuel this time, unfortunately. Um, what we're gonna do here... Where is my retrograde marker? Um, I'm gonna do something I forgot to do last time, which is I'm going to burn off my... which way do I want to be firing? Uh, H, okay. I'm gonna burn off a bunch of my mono propellant here to help us uh, slow down so that we are, you know, making efficient use of the resources we have available to us. Now this is not slowing us down very quickly, but it's going to help a little bit. How much time do we have? Yeah, I've, I've got time to do this, probably, right? I mean, what we're gonna ideally want to do is just burn off all of this monoprop so that we don't waste anything that we brought with us. Uh, it's not its not inconsiderable. Like, you'll notice this thing's sort of moving along there pretty quickly. This is not... This is not nothing. The amount of Delta V we get out of burning this monoprop. It's not huge, but... Uh, considering how badly things went last time, I'm gonna be trying to get every bit of performance and uh, out of this craft that I can so that hopefully hopefully I don't have to go and weep profusely as a result of another failed mission so we're gonna be uh, coming in from a little bit higher this time uh -huh. I feel like that's gonna be a good idea I've also made sure we have plenty of daylight plenty of daylight which is good Alright, let's keep burning our monoprops, keep burning the monoprops. Probably set this thing as my target at this point. Yeah, I'm really hoping we have enough fuel to do this, because I, if I don't want to have to basically re-record the entire thing, I figured, you know, 
sort of pause, keep that one fail in there, and it'll be fine. But I don't want this video to be like a failure montage, so hopefully the stakes are high for me. I don't want to feel like I wasted fucking time making this stuff so far. I'm sure everything will be fine, though. Can't let the tension get to us, then we'll just make more mistakes. Alright, I'm just going to keep this last little bit of monoprop here to help us uh, turn this thing while I burn off this last little... Oh, yeah, let's just burn off this last little bit of fuel. Okay, maybe not quite all of that last little bit of fuel. Coming in much more steeply this time, which is actually going to make our lives a little bit easier, I feel. I want to actually rest some of our vertical speed. And, uh, Sorry, I'm not talking much, guys. I'm focusing. I'm trying to decide what the best way to maneuver this last little bit of fuel I have is going to be on this stage. I want to come in. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the monoprop's gone. We're now having a hard time controlling this. <coughs> but that's okay. All this fuel is now also gone. Tiny bit left, actually, but I'm not going to bother trying to swing this thing around. So let's go ahead and stage. All right. Now, we want to control from here so that, yeah, because right now these are our engines, and this is how we're going to be sort of coming down. Hopefully, we'll be landing nicely. I want these brakes to be on. I want all my brakes to be locked so that, uh, so that when we land, we don't start rolling immediately. Okay. Uh, now, this thing I don't think is capable of slowing itself down particularly quickly, if I recall correctly. This uh, science lab is a lot heavier than the hitchhiker crew cabin. However, we do still want to get a little bit closer before I start sort of burning this thing. Okay. I think the best way to do this. I feel like I'm not really coming out of the very opportune angle. I hope that's not going to, like, hit anything down there. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, because if it's not fine, I'll be too upset. Therefore, I assert it will be fine. I want my surface velocity, not my target velocity. Although they should be pretty much the same thing, given the target's on the surface. Anyway, uh, let's get rid of a little bit... Yeah, so this thing does not change its speed terribly quickly. Let's try and get rid of the rest of our horizontal speed, and then... Whoa! It's a little bit touchy, the way this thing controls as well, so... Because the weight is not well distributed. So this thing, this design is hard to fly. As I said, I would not necessarily recommend an exact sort of copy of this design, because this thing is none too easy to, to control. Alright. Looks like we're going to be slowing down in the timely manner. Looks like we're not going to be dashing our hopes and dreams across the surface once again, and it also looks like we have enough fuel. I feel good about this. This is going to be close. We don't have a huge amount of gas left in the tank, but I think we're going to be doing okay. So we're now coming down pretty much straight down. We're going to be a couple kilometers away from, uh, maybe only a few hundred meters away from the habitation module, but that's not a big deal. Let's just make sure we come in nice and slowly. I do not want any more explosions. No, I want my surface velocity, not my target velocity for the moment game. Please stop changing that without consulting me. going easy, keeping our speed nice and low. By just, this is not, this is like a really inefficient way to use your fuel. Um, sort of burning high up and then burning constantly on your way down at a low sort of 
setting to keep your speed low, but it's really, if you have enough fuel to do it, it's really safe. And I think I've got enough fuel for this, and I'm really concerned about safety at the moment, because this thing does not have a good thrust weight ratio, particularly. So, um... Oh shit, maybe I don't have enough fuel for this. How high off the ground are we? That's the question. Hard to tell. Ah, uh, fuel's going down really slowly. I think I think we got enough, right? Yeah, we're getting close now. This is going to be enough fuel. We're not going to have any accidents. I'm going to try and just rotate this so that's facing kind of towards the target when we land. Because it's a little bit hard to steer on the ground. Okay. Yeah, coming in nice and easy. We're definitely going to touch down before we run out of fuel in this stage. Why was I even worried? This is going to be fine. This is going to be a really nice landing. We're going to come down nice and gentle. Touch down real soft. It's mostly flat, so it'll be a nice, easy drive the uh, kilometer or so over to the habitation module. Nobody's going to explode. I'm not going to have to become incredibly mad. And we're going to have another successful video demonstrating one of my craft concepts. This one... Perhaps not as solid as the Moon Return Lander, and indeed uh, not as solid as the Duna Rocket I'm going to be showing you guys next time. The Duna Rocket I'm really, really happy with, so keep an eye out for that in the next couple of days. Here we go. It's about to be touched down. We want to go real slow here. Real slow. And... Alright, here we are. Whew! That was pretty nerve-wracking. So we're about a kilometer away from the habitation module. What we now have to do is... I think I action grouped these things, but I can't remember the... Uh, how I had those groups set up, so... We're just going to shut these down manually. And uh, we've now activated this little rear engine. This little, this little ant engine, which is just going to push us across the surface. And uh, hopefully... It's going to contain enough fuel to get us the kilometer or so we have to travel to reach our target. We're going to want to control from this clampatron again. So we can, yeah, all right. Release our brakes and fire up the engine. Fire up the engine a little bit more so that we don't slide down this hill and instead go up the hill. Now, this thing is not very stable, so you got to be careful when you're steering this around on the surface. But because of the moon's low gravity, you can actually get quite a lot of authority just with the, um... That's why this advanced inline stabilizer is here. Like, so this thing, not enormously stable, but as long as you keep an eye on the roll of the thing and make sure to make any sort of corrections, you shouldn't have too many problems. Um, go slowly. It's, a little, it's boring, I know, going slow, but it, you don't want to be trying to fucking go too fast because... Uh, if this thing flips out after you've landed it, and parts of it rip off and explode and you can't use it anymore, you're just going to feel really, really sad deep inside your heart, you know? You've been doing this this challenging mission, the landing was probably difficult based on based on my experience, so you don't want to you don't want to take any risks at this point. You just want to keep control of your craft and have everything go absolutely swimmingly. Just keeping the thrust on here because we're going up this hill and uh, you know don't be afraid to use your brakes a little bit I think I yeah so I reduced the brake torque on all these brakes from the default value quite a bit so that I can use those to because if the brake torque is really high sometimes you have problems when you apply the brakes very unfortunate problems we don't want that happening not after all we've been through Eight meters a second or so. That that's a good speed. I feel. Let's just uh, let's just physics warp a little bit here, since it doesn't take too long. I'm a little bit nervous about this using this physics warp actually, but I don't think anything bad is going to happen. I feel like it should be okay. We've got our engine off. I'm not doing. I'm not going to use any control inputs or anything like that while we're in physics warp. I'm just going to let this thing. Sort of drive in a straight line. Okay, let's get a little bit more speed happening now. We've slowed down a bit, and we're getting pretty close anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, this, uh, you can go, so you can easily 
get yourself, you know, if you gotta drive a kilometer or two across the surface after you land this thing, you've got enough fuel for that in this. This is just one Oscar B tank for this engine. Um, but, uh, you know, it's... It's not gonna take much to push this thing around on the surface. It's, it's not super heavy or anything like that, and, you know, it rolls, so... Let's pick up a little bit more speed. I feel like sort of, you know, seven, five to seven meters a second is a nice safe speed. And not, not too agonizingly slow. Alright, here we are, we're getting close. So... Everything's going pretty good so far. Uh, we're gonna slow this thing down a little bit. I'm just gonna tap on the brakes. Oh no, that's good. The amount of torque I'm getting from the brakes there is pretty reasonable. So we're slowing down, but pretty pretty gradually, which is nice. Okay, so here we are. And now, all we have to do, we have only one thing more. We I could probably have a bit more torque on these brakes, actually, but that's okay. The last thing we gotta do is just uh, go ahead and dock. So I'm gonna set the docking port as my target. Easy there. Turn this thing around. Yeah, so you notice, like, I can just spin this thing on the spot. It's fine. And now we're just gonna use just a tiny bit of thrust, coming real slow on this docking port. With our docking port. And these two things, once we get nice and close, should join together. And then we will be having a great day because we will have had a wonderful, successful mission. You'll notice I'm only steering with these front wheels. I disabled the steering on the back ones. Uh, that's another thing that's probably good to notice about this. Okay, here we go. Coming in. Coming in. Applying brakes. Applying the brakes harder. Let's go real slow here. Real slow. Slow, 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 slow. Okay, and... Come on. Let's jiggle this a little bit. Come on. Get in there. Here we see, in nature, the mating of the space station. It fumbles somewhat clumsily at first, trying to find a solid connection. But in the end... Can't quite... I can't quite... In the end, I can't quite... Come on. Come on. Alright, I should probably turn off SAS because it doesn't. It's not helping me. Come on. I can't actually reverse with this thing, so I gotta, gotta start to jiggle. The space station is not very good at mating, apparently. It's having a hard time getting its shit together. I'm not sure that was a good idea. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Had to get one of these gears up because uh, the I figured out the problem was you know they weren't quite lined up vertically, so I had to raise one of those gears to get them connected. Let's let's lower that again now. There we go. Sitting nice and stable. I probably shouldn't have moved these things around. Anyway. There you go, folks! That's how you construct this thing. Of course, I didn't bring any Kerbals with me. You could have chosen to put Kerbals inside this before you, um, before you launched, or you could bring Kerbals now in that Moonlander I showed in the last video. The important thing is, we were eventually able to land this thing on the moon. We've got a science lab here that if we load this up with data, will produce us lots and lots of science, and we have habitation, for six Kerbals, which is enough to complete some contracts and get you some money. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, failures and all, and uh, until next time, Trouble T Cat out.